Hey, it's Laura. Welcome back to my channel where I want to help you know God and make him known. In this video, we are going to talk through Matthew 14 and the incredible things that show us, us about God's heart and how that relates to us. All right, let's dig right in. In verses 1 through 12, we see John the Baptist beheaded, his death. It's super sad because it was basically because Herod was being a fool and made a rash promise that he ended up having to keep because he made it in front of other people. Super sad. So the, the disciples go and they bury the body of John the Baptist and then they report back to Jesus. And then verse 13, it says, when Jesus heard about it, he withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. How appropriate, right? When there is grief, when we've experienced the death of a loved one or just death of a dream or death of, around us, it is appropriate to get alone and get with the Lord and grieve. So he's in this boat. He, he comes to the other side and turns out crowds had gone by foot to the other side and he arrives as he steps to shore, it says in verse 14, he saw a huge crowd. Okay, I don't know about you, but if you're like grieving and then you see crowds of people, my first reaction probably is not compassion. But what do we see here? As he stepped ashore, he saw a huge crowd, felt compassion for them and healed their sick. So here he is. He's still grieving. He still has a hard, a, a, a sad heart. But yet he's not stuck in his self, only thinking about himself. He's really still able to feel for other people, have compassion for other people and serve them, even in the midst of experiencing great sorrow. Pretty amazing. And then when evening comes, the disciples approached him and said, this place is a wilderness and, and it's late, so... Why don't you send the crowds away so they can go and get food for themselves? <laughs> um, bad boundaries, because this is Jesus calls, and bad theology, because Jesus is the one that can feed them, no matter where the food comes from, right? So what does Jesus say? They don't need to go away. Jesus told them, you give them something to eat. So how cool that he... he directs it back to them. You, you give them something to eat. It's almost like he wants them to see their inadequacy, that they don't, they don't have what he needs or what the, the people don't, the disciples don't have what the people need. And then they admit it, but we only have five loaves and two fish. And then what does Jesus say? Bring them here to me. He's kind of opening their eyes like, you don't have what they need, but I do. Bring them to me, he said. Then he commanded the crowns to sit down in the grass. Okay, this is like so cool because it reminds me of Psalm 23. He leads me beside quiet waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures. All right, he here is the good shepherd, the one who feeds the sheep. He's having people lay down in green grass or sit down in grass. And then he takes the loaves and he looks up and he um, he looks to heaven. He blessed them. He broke the loaves and then he gave them to the disciples. Okay, they're all primed and ready realizing I don't have what they need. We don't have it. They already admit that they don't have what these people need. But now Jesus gives the food to the disciples to give the other people. How cool because Jesus could have done it all by himself. He could have poof, like caused everyone to have their own little meal right in their lap. He didn't need it to be handed out. And yet he chose to give it to his disciples to hand out. So they know it's not from them. And yet God still wants to use them. They're getting the glimpse of God wants to use me. Like Jesus wants to use me, this inadequate, not sufficient one. The sufficient one wants to use them. All right. So then what happens? Um, everyone ate and was filled and they picked up 12 baskets. So everyone, 5,000 men, plus all the um, tons of kids, I'm sure, and wives. And they all were filled. Pretty amazing. And then immediately he made the disciples to get in the boat and go ahead of him so he could have time uh, to go up the mountain and by himself and pray. And when evening 
came, he was there in verse 23, uh, but the boat was already over a mile from land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. So here the, the boat, they're having a problem out there on the sea. Around three in the morning, it's three in the morning, all right? Stressed out, they haven't slept much. Um, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking, they were terrified, obviously. I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I would be terrified if I saw somebody walking. I haven't had a whole lot of sleep and there's like waves crashing everywhere. All right. It's a ghost, they said. They cried out in fear. These are grown men crying out in fear. All right. Then he says, immediately, immediately. He didn't wait. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them. Have courage. Have courage. This reminds me of Joshua 1, 9 and a ton of other places that says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So he's saying, have courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Okay, that it is I. It literally means I am. Literally. Okay, back in Exodus, when Moses is like, who do you, who should I say sent me? I am. That's who God calls himself. I am, meaning the all sufficient one, the one who was and is and is to come. That one, I am. All right, have courage. Why? Well, I am. Don't be afraid. All right, that's sandwich. Have courage and don't be afraid to sandwich or sandwiches the fact that God is. All right, he is our sufficiency. And then, then Peter kind of just, I think that went over his head. He's like, well, Lord, it is, it's you. Um, not catching the I am part. Peter answered, command me to come to you on the water. How cool, because Jesus didn't get mad at him and start being like, come on, Peter. He's like, come. He, he's willing to take on Peter's doubt, right? He takes it on, come, climbing out of the boat. Peter's walking on the water, coming towards Jesus. What happens? He gets distracted by all the things going around him. And he starts getting terrified again because he's not keeping his eyes on Jesus, um, the great I am. He's keeping his eyes on the scariness of the things around him. When he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out. So at least he cried out. That's cool. That's a redeeming factor of this whole thing is he cried out, Lord, save me. Even in the midst, he, he's seeing all this thing. He still re redirected his eyes back on the Lord and said, save me immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught a hold of him and then said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Bringing it back to, we don't need to doubt, but Jesus is not thrown off by it when we do. Then those in the boat worshiped him and said, truly you are the son of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then um, they get to the crossover to the other side and someone's recognized him, go tells the whole town, they bring the sick, Jesus heals a bunch of people. Amazing, amazing chapter. Um, I just think it's so cool that it's so obvious and he wants the disciples to get it, that they are not adequate in, a, in and of themselves as if anything came from them. Their adequacy comes from God. That's what 2 Corinthians 3, 5, Jesus wants them to get that that he is the sufficient one and they are not, and yet he wants to use them. So when you see the problems, the chaos going on in our life, um, know that Jesus is the solver. All right, he, it is 5,000 men and all the women and children, lots, probably over 10,000 people. That's a problem. They need food. That's a, Jesus solves that and he wants to use his people to do it. So no matter the chaos going around, Jesus can solve it and he probably wants to use you to do it. Not that you're adequate in of yourselves, but he makes you adequate. Um, God can also take your little measling what, what you have to offer because he gave it to you and he can multiply that to be a blessing to others around you. He can make it enough. So really, our problems, what we see, the chaos in the world um, can be solved by Jesus, and he loves to use his people. I hope you are encouraged by Matthew 14. If you are, would you please share this on your social media? 
um, platforms and please subscribe and hit the notification so you're notified of the next videos. All right, look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye.